Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all! Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in and downsat and stuff! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited and delighted to be with you guys again today. Hanging out live with the live stream, the chat. Shout out to everybody holding us down. With the live stream, shout out to everybody who's listening on the podcasting apps, wherever you may be. So thank you guys for tuning in. I can't go any further without saying a huge thank you to all the Patreon supporters, everybody who's supporting my work via Patreon. This show is listener supported, listener funded. So thank you guys for co-creating with me. I want to give a shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or two here. So quick shout out to some of the new patrons here. We got Matthew Kalana. Travis Sabin, thank you guys for coming on. Michael, Experiencing God, thank you. Richie, Renita, and uh, Andrew, thank you guys for coming on, believing in the work, supporting the show. If you'd like to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There you get access to my entire discography. All of my work is available over there, over 200 plus songs. You get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystic sessions, our Sunday morning cheer class, and a whole bunch of other cool things that we're rolling out as well. Patreon.com backslash Truthseeker. Head on over there, check that out. You also get um, some really cool discount codes for the website. We got a bunch of uh, t-shirts and merch and stuff like that. So if you want to head on over there, check that stuff out. Uh, working hard bringing content we got some guided meditations that are also available too. make sure you check that stuff out as well so without further ado i'm going to go ahead and bring on my guest for today lauren walsh lauren welcome to the truth seeker podcast how are you my friend hey i'm doing well thank you for having me oh good stuff and uh now you've been making an impact with your work uh reaching a lot of women across the globe essentially um connecting what is it over 85 countries was it on your website of uh, empowering women uh, women's circles meditations uh healing wounds and traumas and things like that just bringing restoration to the women so i'm excited to kind of get into to your work and what led you to that a little bit today so again welcome to the podcast great thank you um let, let's just start just giving like an overview of what you bring to the table what you're currently doing and then we'll kind of get into what got you into that work Okay. Well, what I'm currently doing is I run a business called Global Sisterhood that is a platform for rising women to discover themselves and also discover community. And so we have over 10,000 women's circles that have happened on our platform in the past three years, and I believe over 90 countries at this point. And women, we provide resources and tools every new moon, along with the astrology and the zodiac and also rituals and exercises for women to gather 
so that they have transformational content to really dive into themselves in a safe container with each other. And we provide a lot of free resources as well as membership programs and things like that for women who want to go deeper. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of questions even in that, but what 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 kind of got you into that? Because you're talking about dealing with trauma, um, you know, releasing wounds and healing and things like that. What 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 kind of got you into this work? Well, my personal my personal journey of healing is what got me into this work. So I'm very passionate about healing healing wounds of the feminine in men and women in society. I'm very passionate about that. I believe the imbalance of masculine and feminine is pretty much the fund, fundamental reason our world is out of balance. Um, so I, as a young girl, I experienced what many people experience, and that was abuse and judgment and all sorts of patterns that led to destruction, like, like uh, addiction and different things like this. And from that experience, I felt very alone and very lost and also very jaded, very angry and very judgmental. Um, which you see is rampant in our society is a lot of judgment, right? And I, I lived that. I had a lot of judgment of people. And I went seeking for guidance. I went seeking truth like you. And I found myself in the Amazon rainforest. And there I was able to connect with nature. I was able to feel the presence of something deeper and truer. And I was able to see in the reflection of the indigenous women there, a a presence and a femininity that wasn't filled with pleasantries or should be's or expectation. It was just raw and it was real and it was untamed. And it, it definitely changed my life meeting these women. And I, this aspect of my heart awoke and I decided I was going to go seeking for transformation and healing. And I began going on that journey for multiple years. And on that journey of healing myself, women would show up and I'd be like, this is what I'm doing for myself. This is how I'm healing. And I'm just share my story and share what I was learning. And it would see the impact that it made through authenticity and through vulnerability. And my journey became just very clear. It was just to, to help women grow. And it led me to global sisterhood. That's awesome. Finding that healing in the Amazon. So was there any uh, medicine used at all? The Amazon is rich with all sorts of medicines, yes. And but the most important part of the Amazon for me was being away from so much imagery and technology and being <laughs> by myself yeah. in the Amazon. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a, because there's a, this huge resurgence where, you know, maybe with the internet, people just being vocal about their encounters and stuff, there's a lot of people who are turning to some of the sacred plant-based medicines, uh, whether it's ayahuasca, DMT, psilocybin, things like that. And they're going to the Amazon, taking that trip, that, uh, you know, that ex exodus there to find healing. And a lot of people are finding it. I know, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Amber Lyons with uh, Reset.me and her work and her story's just been amazing, going to the Amazon, finding healing through, uh, I think, an ayahuasca journey or whatever. And being there and experiencing something greater than who she was and and it's catching on there's a lot of people who are doing that so that's awesome that, that you did that so did you uh did you use any plant medicine when you were there or was it just was it just literally getting away from technology just kind of pushing that reset button that way which helps a lot as well well I just went and I was with the indigenous people and their natives and, the, and and their native ways. And there was plenty of plant medicines, ayahuasca and things like that are around, but that was not the main thing I did there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, when, when you seen them, right, when you seen the indigenous people there, you seen the women and, 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 and whether the medicine was involved too, because there's kind of a connection there. Usually there's like an impartation you seen something in them that maybe you were logging, logging for yourself or even just seeing something missing from the people back home? Did you see a piece that they had? There was no perfectionist. Yeah. There wasn't always in the mirror, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Did you see some of that going on? A lack of vanity. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A lack of greed. I don't think... I don't think you can have greed when you're in the Amazon and you're connected. <laughs> if you are truly, if you're truly connected, if you're yeah. truly awake, then 
you know that everything you need will be provided for you. Even if everything you need is simply a piece of fruit off a tree or a pair of shoes that are donated to you, if you have the abundance of nature and you feel connected to that intelligence, you don't feel a threat of safety. You don't feel anxiety. You just feel, you just feel there and peaceful. Yeah. And I think that's what I saw that was really profound was this, there was not a need to please. There was not a need to perform. There was not a need to manipulate ourselves into something that will be accepted or adored or praised. It was just people existing and in harmony with nature, in equilibrium with the world. And it's a culture shock when you come back to the United States and you're like, wow, the rat race, the hamsters, the, all of these things. Yeah. And I, you know, I've contemplated in my life living in the Amazon. I've lived there as a, for a total of like eight months in my life so far. And I continue to go back and study with my teachers there. But I don't feel that that's my work. I don't feel my work is to be a spiritual seeker in a cave this lifetime. I feel like mine is to go into the thick of it, to go into culture and kind of disrupt, shake up, and then bring into the heart. And so with Global Sisterhood, we like to do that. We like to be like, hey, pay attention to this. We know you're suffering here. Here's a better solution. Here's a way. Here's a bridge inside of yourself to a new way, to a different type of life. And so I'm really fascinated with that bridge, not the oasis, but the bridge to the oasis within, God within, heaven on earth within. Yeah. Definitely. That's my, my oh excuse me I'm sorry. <laughs> How rude! Oh my God I can't believe so rude. <laughs> so you've kind of found a way to do that, right? So you know whatever um, spiritual experience it is or, or 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 freedom that you find, there's an authority that you have like this way of uh, kind of recreating it. Like okay. I found how to recreate that. And you don't have to get everybody on a plane and take them to the Amazon. There's a portal there of like, whether it's just getting in through meditation, mindfulness, because we know that's what the medicine communicates is mindfulness, be present in the moment, focused on, you know, who you really are versus the plastic and the makeup and the clothing and all of that kind of stuff, or who we've been told or what we have to be, uh, the essence of who we truly are. And there's ways to tap into that. Um, no matter where you are. And a lot of it is getting back into nature to do that, putting your feet on the ground, taking your shoes off, literally putting your feet on the ground through meditation, through prayers, through chanting, all, all of these type of things. So are you doing that? Is that kind of like what you did? You you went there, had this you know revelation, life change and say, OK, here's how we can kind of go there and experience that healing in our own personal circles, no matter where you are across the globe. Is that kind of what you're doing? More or less. I would say that I'm no, I'm no expert. I'm also a seeker. And so what I have noticed, and one of the things that was really impactful, impactful for me when I was in the Amazon is how ritualized life is, how taking leaves or taking a branch or existing within nature, there's a ritual component that creates that mindfulness. It creates that intentional living. And so having ritual. So a lot of what we do with Global Sisterhood is we do new moon rituals. So women gather around the new moon and we give them content to do that because women together, first of all, you wouldn't know this because I doubt you've ever been in a circle of women, to, but like a circle of women in ritual and in prayer and meditation is magical. It's something that is so powerful, so mysterious, so healing. And so we help women learn how to create those spaces for themselves and for each other. So there's a two part. They build this community around them. They build a sisterhood of authenticity, deep sharing women who can go to these dark places, go to the light places, and all of it is accepted and understood. And there's this great mystery and cohesion that takes place between them. And then also women are also stepping out is, as leaders to be like, I'm going to form this community and I'm going to speak my voice. I'm going to share my experiences. I'm going to model vulnerable, authentic leadership. And then they begin to trust themselves and they begin to have more confidence in themselves. And then they go out and they do things in the world like innovate or leave that bad relationship or create that business they want to create. Because what I'm really interested in, like my passion, here we go, you're getting to it. My passion is I want, I want this, I want the feminine presence in men and in women to feel it has a free, a free voice uh, to be in a business meeting, in a boardroom, be like, you know what? My intuition says no. 
Let's listen to my intuition. Let's go research my intuition and have that be just as accepted as, well, the data says this and this and this and this, you know, like I want that balance in the world and I want women to feel so free from the idea that they are not enough, that the imbalance of masculine and feminine has created, that they're like, I have a passion to go feed the hungry. I have a passion to sing this song. I have a passion to go build this amazing thing that's going to do this other amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I want women to feel free to do that versus worry that what do they matter? What's their voice? Their voice isn't important. Their perspective. I, I really want all women in the world to feel like they can truly stop giving away their power to somebody who's better than them or a man or whatever it is and really just like rock it. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me, I'm going to try to, you know, unpack this a little bit. So, um, you would say like the, uh, the masculine side is the more, uh, strength determined will. And then the feminine aspect of, uh, what, what, essentially be the opposite, right? Because the two have to coexist would be being more sensitive, more caring, more honoring. Um, and so there needs to be this place where we come together within not just women and men, but within the individual to kind of be more sensitive, be more spiritual, compassionate, it's okay to cry, it's okay to do these type of things in both um male and female right so is that kind of what it what it means to kind of merge the two a little bit i'm not, i'm pretty sure it's very deep and that's just scratching yeah no surface. i think i think that's a great a great explanation although i think we're redefining what masculine and feminine even is mm -hmm. and i can't say i'm the expert at that because it's uncharted territory really yeah. but i think i think historically we've thought of feminine as more passive more receptive really if you even think of the anatomy like fem femininity is more receptive mm -hmm. empathetic there's a deep wisdom. There's like a deep mystery. And then the masculine is like everything that can be seen, tangible, productivity, building, forced to move forward while there's like this coat, like the feminine is more like the incubation and the creativity, right? Yeah. But I think we're moving into an era where it's we can redefine masculine can also be passive and receptive yeah. and feminine can also be incredibly active. So I think there is a reclamation happening in our planet today around what femininity is and what masculinity is and how we can really truly come to wholeness and balance within ourselves. And I think it starts with I think it's already, I mean, it's definitely already started. The rise of these women's movements, Me Too, these kinds of things, women unleashing these stories that they felt ashamed to even share. Yeah. And then we were all astounded, but not surprised by the sheer number of women who have had these stories of abuse. And then you have this whole like side of manhood being like, wow, did I do something perhaps that made a woman feel that way? I never meant to, mm -hmm. but then there's this kind of division and this, this kind of <laughs> war, you know, and I, I really want to heal that division and heal that war because it's not a man's fault. It's not it's like, let's say, let's say there's a man who is 30 years old and in his twenties, he got drunk and he raped a girl. And that is something that is not okay. But at the same time, did he have a chance you know what I mean? And the way our society has created masculinity, right? Has, has told men how they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be shut down emotional. They have all this responsibility and then introduce porn culture and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he gets traumatized at a very young age with that potentially. Yeah. And then he tries to fall in love with a girl. His, he falls in love with a girl and he gets rejected. All these self-confidence issues happen and he gets drunk and all his friends are talking the smack and he does something and it, desperately hurts somebody else, but it also hurts him. Yet we've been in this society where that stuff's not been talked about. And we see, and we see right now that the fem femininity women are the victims, but I also, I don't see it like that. I see it as men and women are both victims. And I think that the oppressor is just as oppressed, but in a polar way spiritually. And I think that met like the, to heal the masculine and feminine wound, we have to really take a compassionate lens at what men have been through as well. And what women have been through and really seek seek to understand and change the system from within by the way we're doing business, the way we're running our governments, and also the way we're raising our children. That's awesome. Do you think, um, 
I'm talking about it's almost like this perfect person, right? Somebody who's well rounded on both sides versus unbalanced and they're just too strong or they're too in their emotions. They're emotional, they're crying all the time. You know, there's an unbalance there. So if we're looking at this perfectly rounded person, spiritual and productive, you know, able to make things happen, right? I think that's a, a well rounded person, a little bit on both sides. Um, do you think that the ancient civilizations that there was a a person or a people like this that there were more balanced like we and we got away from that i don't know you hear stories like that with like atlanteans and things like that yeah. um i would i would love to believe that but i'm not sure i can't yeah. say for sure i do believe there have been very balanced spiritual masters that have incarnated yeah I think Christ, Buddha, all of these types of avatars are are that for sure, teachers. And then many disciples have probably made it to that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is something we can all aspire to be. I think that there's a lot of ideas on what perfect balance mean. And um, you see a lot of it in, in like Instagram culture and things like that. <laughs> like the 10 keys to being like the perfect... Da, 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 da. And it's just like, you know, it's an individual thing. What is, what is, what is balance? What is wholeness? What is, what is, what is your spiritual truth? And I believe there can be many truths within the whole one yeah. truth yeah. and they can be truths that are polar. And how do we then reconcile the polarities of like, for instance, for instance, here's another polarity back to this example I said around the rape. It's a really extreme example, but I, I'm passionate about this example. Mm -hmm. There's the victim who goes through excruciating pain. And then there's the drunk boy who who maybe shuts down completely emotionally from it and forgets it. Or maybe he goes through a lot of guilt. Who knows what he experiences, right? There's, there's this totally different experience there. How do you reconcile that, right? So there's the victim and there's the perpetrator. But actually on the same end, there's truths there. There's two truths that make each person innocent on some level, you know, because each each crime or some or each crime and each ex thing you experience comes from something that is the same. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's usually uh, what we're talking about a little bit is, you know, dealing with the wounds and the trauma, like going back to figuring out what that is to kind of fix it, to undo it, even generational. And a lot of this is generational stuff that your totally. parents did, stuff that your grandparents did, your grandparents, you know, I come out of a, um, you know, a, a line of, of, of people, you know, my brother, my uncles, my cousins, it was normal to put their hands on their, their spouse, to slap their wife. She said something out of line to slap them. To grab and I, I came up seeing this and and being you know a kid at hangouts at people's houses and parties and they would do it in front of people and it was okay and uh, they would ask me to help them and I'm a little kid and I, I see this and I have compassion and empathy because it, it, when you see it happen it's not right but it, it happened all the time but there's nothing I could do then to help them um, I started seeing seeing myself. Um, kind of gravitating towards that and I, I did it one time early in my relationship as a as a uh, uh, teenager with my with my wife now when I was a teenager I put my hands on her once and I felt really bad but I could see that like that it's it was like an option it's something that was just kind of you know on that path and I had to take a stance I had to get healing I had to renounce all of their BS that just kind of overflows, like looking at things like it's normal. And we have to, and that that's just one, that's that's something that kind of like physically manifests and you can see, oh, that's bad, don't do that. But there's so much stuff within the little boy, the, the fatherless person, you know what I'm saying? All of these totally. things that just kind of stack up to kind of what makes that okay. Even with the pornography issue you're talking about, this instant gratification that, I can't do anything right. No, nothing I do, I, I don't feel accomplished in my work, in my relationships, in my job. But I get an instant gratification when I look at pornography and things like that. So we're trying to unpack what all of this stuff is layered on top of the person to go and do that inner soul work to say, why in the hell 
am I an alcoholic? Why do I like to look at pornography? Not as far as like, why do I like to look at it? I think that's within us, but why am I addicted to it? Why can't I stop looking at pornography or, or those type of things? So it's about doing that inner work and figuring out what are those triggers. We've been talking about a lot. It's like the triggers are good, really, because they kind of let you know where you need healing. Why, when I see this type of person, why does my blood start boiling? Why do I see a preacher? Why, when somebody says the word God, why do I get mad? Like all of these weird little triggers, and they're different for everybody, you know? Um, uh, but finding out what, because it's like, I think the triggers are like just somebody touching that open wound. Ow, that hurts. Totally. That hurts. That hurts. Don't do it. Don't touch that wound. And so now we have these boundaries to keep you away from the wound. You can't say yeah. that. You can't look, you can't dress like that. You can't, you know, blah, blah, blah versus, okay, we need to find healing. So this thing doesn't get in, uh, infected. And I start lashing out on people who didn't even hurt me and harm me. And, and this stuff is becoming more sexy. It's like to, to actually do the inner work to find healing yeah. so that Hallelujah. You, don't, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Continue the BS and the garbage that you don't even know that you're perpetrating in. Well said. Well said. And that was beautiful sharing. Thank you for your vulnerability and your authenticity, because I think that is so what's needed. We have all done things. We have all, we've all gone down that road you're talking about of that karma that was laid out, out for us of intergenerational trauma. Yep. And we're just acting out the patterns and the, and the beliefs. And we're do, we do things that we regret. And it's not about shaming there's too much shaming in this culture. There's yeah. way too much shaming. There's too much locking in jail and throwing people away. And there's a place and time to like put somebody aside and be like, you are out of control yeah. for sure. But, but there's definitely like, there's, there's gotta be this, this resurgence of compassion, compassionate wisdom, empathy in our, in our country and in our world. That's like, you know, I don't want anything to do with that type of behavior. And I don't need to let that behavior near my life. Hell no, I can have boundaries for certain types of behavior. Yeah. But me sitting here in my little corner, judging the world for what they're doing doesn't help it. It doesn't help me. Seeking to understand that which has hurt you and find compassion for it is liberating. It's liberating. And so like what you said too that stuck out to me was around God and the trigger around God. I mean, yeah. think about what has happened in the name of God. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody's like, wow, it's so hard to even embrace God. And that to me is the saddest thing in the world because God, whatever name you want to call it by, the loving universal force that exists within everything yeah. is the cure. It is the healing. And here we are, children disconnected from that source because people have been raped and pillaged and murdered and wars have been forged in the name of God. And here we are seeking in on the internet and seeking in <laughs> books when we can find that God presence inside. Yeah. And and that's how we do that healing. That's how we yeah. begin to heal the wounds. And so this work of gathering and having these conversations and sharing vulnerably, sharing authentically and doing these processes of healing together, man, they're so powerful. They're so powerful. Yeah. There's so many people you, you find out it's like you're running from the very thing that you need and you don't even know it. You know, it's be because of triggers, because of you know, and, and, and we can look at the God thing on a, just like a global level, but just in, even in like the inner workings of church and my uncle was a pastor or, you know, this type of church. And a lot of people, when we talk about God or Christ, the, the first thing that pops into their minds is Fred Phelps in the Westboro Baptist church. And it's like, okay, that's God, that's Jesus. No, I don't want it. So every time you bring up God and Hey, I love Jesus. Oh, you love their, that Jesus. So there's this, there's a trigger even there to kind of undo all of this stuff or whatever, these preconceived notions that we don't even know that we had, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like just traveling on these paths of, of our destiny, we don't even know it. Like just looking at our family system, how we were raised, what was okay. When you started doing drugs, like what was that gateway? Did your, you know, siblings do drugs, your older, like I got into all most of this stuff because because of my brother was in into it and he was just like 
almost like a father figure to me. Even I remember I even had an argument with my mom at one point and said that he was, but he was a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? And and we'd use drugs recreation. I was 11, 12 years old smoking weed and all of that kind of stuff, breaking into houses because he broke into houses and it was just passed down and and everything is passed down. It's scary. It is very scary unless you come from a, a good family lineage because then the good stuff's passed down as well. But if you come from a broken system, you start inheriting things. My sister is a spitting image of my mom. Like, and it's like the jobs, the men, everything. And the and a lot of it's bad. A lot of it's the, the bad. She has a lot of good stuff that's passed down too. But a lot of the, the, the negative stuff, and, and that's kind of like the default. I think we're all on, that's the default switch until you become conscious and say, hold on. I need to get down to the root of these problems and figure out why I can't keep a job. Why am all of my, you know, all of these things. And really it's, you know, I do, I counsel people. We do one-on-one sessions. We talk about generational curses and those type of things and how to break them and how to stop them. It's a, it's a hell of a process, it but is. it can be done. And there is freedom and there is hope. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing. Yeah, there is. And it, and, he- healing your, f- I like that you called it a family curse because you know, I don't disagree with that language. You can break it, um, man. You can break. You the can, curse, you, you know? can, you can definitely break it. I, I've had to myself, and mm-hmm. it's liberating and free. And and the thing is, I think what keeps the curse locked, right, is the shame we feel for being yeah. a part of that family and for having like why me? Like, because I think we all inherently know that we are a part of something greater. I think yeah. we all know that whether we're scared to look at it or not. And so then there's this kind of consciousness that's like this, the ego that's like, but then why, why did I have this? Why did I deserve this? What I do, what makes me bad? What makes me not good enough? And then there's this shame that keeps us locked in these destructive patterns and this sadness and this depression and this anger. And once we can really heal ourselves from that shame, really realize, wow, this was this didn't happen to me. This happened for me because yeah. I have a yeah. mission. And I <laughs> would not even be able to complete my mission yeah. had I not experienced all that other horrible stuff yeah. and had I not done all that horrible stuff. And so that's why we're that's why we're here. Like yeah. as survivors, as as growers, as healers, as risers, it's we're here to take our experiences and use it for good. I remember um a friend of mine posted a Facebook post and he, he was, uh, I guess kind of religious. He was in church and stuff. And he posted just, he said, everybody just thank God for all the good stuff in your life. And I just commented and thank him for the bad too. You know, thank him for everything. If, if we didn't have that bad stuff, we wouldn't have a, like a, a natural empathy that it imparts to us, like an organic okay. empathy. Like, hold on, I really care for your well-being. Why? Because I've been through it. I know what you're. I know what you're going through. We wouldn't have that. There wouldn't be that contrast if we wasn't once in the dark. We would have no idea how beautiful the light is and how much mm-hmm. power the light has. If you just was raised in the light or you, you've stayed in the darkness, you have to have that balance there, even the balance and then the contrast. I said, okay, that's beautiful, that's ugly, because I know I can see the two. Some people can't. They've either always been in the light, they've never had trauma, they've always just had a cookie yeah. cutter life, and they don't know what darkness looks like, you know? And well, then on there's the- trauma on every scale. Like mm-hmm. even someone who's not experienced direct trauma, who grew up in a very wealthy environment, perhaps there was a pressure for them to be really beautiful or make all make be perfect or whatever the pressure might be. And if you've grown up in this culture and you've been impacted by the news and the media, you, there's, it's experience. <laughs> like there's, yeah, there is, there point. is, there is trauma on every <laughs> level. There's, I, I like to think of the trauma as a dial and then some people have it here and some have it here, but it's the same trauma. It's a global wound that we're all trying to heal together. And whether somebody's had a cookie cutter life or somebody comes from the slums, you know, like, it's the same. It's just different degrees. Yeah. Um, go, going back to the, you know, the well-rounded spiritual person, if they existed, we're talking about the, you know, the gurus and uh, the masters mm-hmm. and things like that who have existed. Yeah. Um, they've had to have some inkling of, of this well-rounded feminine, uh, you know what I'm saying, masculine and feminine aspects. I want to ask you about this. And this is probably, I guess, maybe our perception of this culture is more spiritual. But a lot of people 
who are from India or and it's a, a whole different mindset, a whole different culture of, of the way they operate. Um, for me, when okay, so when let me preface it like this: when we look at American culture and we look at the personas that people have, whether it's a uh, the gangster, the thug mentality, like there's a reason those people have to have this hard core shell on the outside. I'm a warrior, and usually within that shell is a hurt kid who's been alone and they have to fight for what they want right so there's not, a different personas. not to mention the oppression of of african americans for ever exactly exactly yeah. so that's there um and we see these hardcore people bodybuilders a lot of them in the u.s this you know usually it's a hardcore shell even obesity a bigger mm -hmm. shell with yeah a hurt it starving individuals starving spiritually starving emotionally within but there's this obesity there's a lot of different aspects we get in i just want to give those personas out there that yeah. we kind of identify with and, and and we kind of you know what i'm saying they become us but then i look at the hindu culture right i look at i don't see a lot of hardcore gangster War, warrior on the outside anyway as far as whether it's bodybuilding or intimidating you don't want to run into this little hindu man in a dark alley I've, i don't have that stigma you know what i'm saying there's something there maybe it comes from this this the you know the very much hinduism is is definitely embracing the uh you know what i'm saying divine you know what i'm saying feminine or whatever, mother. right yeah. so yeah, the mother aspect of, of, of their religious aspect. But can you see that connection there? I've tried to talk to this to, to people and they don't see it, but. I see it. Yeah. I, I don't study Hinduism. I yeah. do yoga, um, mm -hmm. but I haven't gone down far in that path. Um, I actually study mystic Christianity, the roots of Christianity. I, I wanted to explore that route as a way to heal myself from the yeah. dogmas and all of that. And I, I find mystic Christianity, Gnostic Christianity, just truly profound and yeah. actually united with the mother. I believe, I believe the lack of the mother God in, in yeah. culture has, has created a huge wound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I, the, I'm and the same I, way. That's kind of what yeah. I, what I study. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's the mystery. It's the mystery. It's the mystic really. It's the, 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 the mother is the mystical aspect mm -hmm, and the, that self knowledge and self exploration. Um, yeah, I think Wisdom. that was it. Why wisdom isn't... and the holy spirit uh in the yeah, scriptures exactly. is uh definitely the motherly the mother uh, yeah. aspect there and god is almost like the fatherly um chastiser you're in trouble you shouldn't have did that and there's room for that that's that's not like a bad like you know what i'm saying those who despise chastisement or you don't want to be told that you're wrong and so we got everyone gets a trophy type deal you know so there is that room there for the balance we can't be we can't be counterbalanced we have to have a little bit of all of it but i think a perfect view of mystical christianity shows you wisdom the bible talks about wisdom as a woman and we talk about the holy spirit being the motherly nurturer once the dad gets on to you the mother is the comforter which is the bible calls the holy spirit the comforter comforts you and, and kind of nurtures your wounds and it's okay we're gonna get through this we're gonna make it here's how we do it type relationship i i think so but i also know the mother to be quite fierce too i feel like i feel like I feel like there is a stigma around punishment, you know, and because we 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 hear about this like God fearing, like yeah. the justice bringer, right? Yeah. And and to me, I've had an experience in my life where I was like, holy, oh my God, how the hell do I get through this? It was so painful. It was after I'd already had an awakening and I'd been doing my work for several years, and I had a spiritual like reconciliation with a very deep shadow aspect of myself that was huge and hard and scary and lasted about eight months. And in that process, I was just like felt the punishment, felt the shame. And I was like, okay, I'm, I don't know what karma this is. I don't know what lifetime this is, but oh my God, it hurts. But afterwards, after I had paid that penance and I went through this process and I didn't, I did so without turning away from God, but I opened to God and I said, just whatever you have to do to like, whatever you have to do, I'm, I'm here. The, the like, re relief and the miracle that I experienced after having willingly passed through the fire 
was just profound and what it did to my faith, what it did to my capacity to create and to build. Um, Global Sisterhood came after I went through this. Like I, there's, there's a mercy in punishment as well. And this is what I'm saying about these two truths that seem polar that can be encompassed in one because punishment is also mercy. It's also kindness because if you're going down a path that is destructive to your soul, getting punished to go this way is a very merciful thing. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you can't have one without the other. And that's where we, we run into problems. People want one without the other. We want all, you know, the Fred Phelps thing. There's no, you know, in, I think in their book, they feel like they're being compassionate by telling you that you're wrong or whatever the case is. Right. So I just think they have an obscure view of it and it's kind of messed up. But, um, and we can kind of tell because it doesn't feel right. It's, you, it's way too much of this and not enough of that for the balance. Um, I think we're talking about it, but I was a little, um, reluctant to do this interview just because of I'm from the South. I'm from the Bible belt, right? Everything that I've seen on YouTube, on Facebook, things like that, of feminism, the, even that word has kind of been like a bad, scary word. Um, all the weird video clips and segments and the weirdos who were in that movement. And uh, there's a lot of weird stuff around it. So when we're talking about embracing, whether it's feminism, what it become, what, what it has become, it, maybe what the clips that are shown to us on facebook and youtube to make great clickbait segments or whatever the case is it it's kind of weird right so what so undoing that stigma of what it looks like counterbalanced what does returning to that um like a godly feminism i think we can use that type of word what does that look like but i think we're 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 kind of breaking it down in this whole podcast of what a godly feminism or feminine and masculinity combining uh, together. Do you see that stigma there? Do you, are you, I'm sure you're aware of all the, the bad stuff that's kind of, you know what I'm saying? Made segments and clickbait and thrown out there for people to see. Right. I don't think I've seen what you're speaking of. Um, but well, I'll, I I'll say this. Well, usually it's like the whole so social justice warrior, the purple hair feminist, Screaming. I haven't seen and it. You've never seen that? That's no. all I've seen. That's the thing. So, I've never seen that. <laughs> um, but but I can say that I can say that a part of healing trauma, and we have to admit that women have been the most oppressed population, period. Um, colored women worse than white women. Um, and that's just true. And like I said, I believe, and this is a radical belief that some people might not agree with, that the oppressor is just as oppressed in the spiritual level. That's why I think it's a collective wound. That's why I'm passionate about bringing compassion to men. However, just facts, just numbers, women have been oppressed in society and, in, and physically for a long time. And so in that trauma of women healing that trauma, yeah. one of the first steps of healing trauma is rage. Mm -hmm. and, and women are unleashing their rage right now. And I'm sure it's scary. And I'm sure in some cases it's like, feels like an attack and arrows through the heart of men. And I have compassion for that, but I know, I know that rage myself. Yeah. I went through a phase of hating and mistrusting men. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how I could have not, to be honest, but then I saw something when I went to the UN. I had forgiven men for a while, but I went to the UN to the Commission of the Status of Women to, to learn about the truth about women. And the numbers are astounding what is really happening. But I saw this panel about sex trafficking and there was a man there who was a reformed sex trafficker. And I, he, you know, he shipped women off in cages. Like this is what his life was like. And I heard him talk. And I felt so much compassion for him because his life, he never stood a chance. He was neglected. He came from a broken home and these people took him in and they showed him how to be a man. And it was to treat women that way. And my heart broke open. And in that moment, I truly liberated myself from anger towards men. And I realized, wow, we've all been hurt. We've all been hurt. Yeah. So I think this feminism wave that we're in right now, this unleashing yeah. is, is a necessary step. It's a but zeal. I'm, as, yeah. 
Yeah. And I feel like though it, what I'm trying to bring with global sisterhood is the step after the forgiveness, yeah. the forgiveness, and then the understanding. And, yeah. and though when a woman unleashes her rage, I, I, I help her, I hold her, I validate. And this is what I can give men advice to do, validate that rage, but also help her have some, you know, we all have to take our personal accountability for our life and our journeys here. And victimhood is something that can be addicting. And not to say that there should not be given very deep respect and space for a victim to truly go through that process of like healing and whatever anger comes out. But then there comes a point where for her sake or for his sake, forgiveness has to happen. And so I want to just make a shout out to men right now who are feeling really burned and confused about their masculinity. And I want to just say, keep going, stay strong. You know, we're, we're going to work all of this out. (laughs) We're going to figure it out. And, you know, God bless you for doing your inner work. And please, please have patience with women as they heal right now and they find their voice and they, and they find their power and they let go of all of this, this they've been carrying as well. Yeah. So I think what would, um, especially coming from like the Christian mystic aspect, you would be able to know that the Bible talks about that. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Like your battle is not against that woman. Your battle is not against that man, but against powers and principalities in heavenly places, which are strongholds in our mind and our hearts, traumas, things that we're carrying that um, are not our godly image that we were created in perfection there's these other identities that we've kind of taken because of trauma because of things that have happened to us and things like that so we understand that it's not a it's not a a battle of flesh and blood and get mad at these people and these people marching it's something spiritual that's happened to them and a lot of times when those people lash out um or they're just a lot louder than everyone else is because they've been we would say set free from something that you have no idea what they've been through. You just see what they look like. And this is the way that they know to express it. So I would say like, you know, just weird stuff, like from, from a man's perspective who, uh, you know, I guess you want to say more masculine or whatever. We see things like some of the toxic feminism or whatever, or the, you know, the purple hair social, social justice warriors who are louder. There's a stigma. There's a meme there. They're, they've become memes, you know, probably just because of the people who are added on my friends list. Like I have a little bit of everybody. So I see a little bit of everything and some of that stuff gets through. Um, but even like the, uh, you know what I'm saying? The armpit hair movement of growing your armpit hair out and dyeing it. Um, these are just a couple of examples, free the nip, you know, letting your, your breast show or whatever the case is, these, these different things, because you feel like you're making a, a, a stance from something that you've been oppressed from. And these are just ways that it's showing there in feminism it, or whatever, but it, sh- it, it happens everywhere. Like when you've been told that, let's just throw an example out there, that if, you, that you, if you're a Christian, you can't drink alcohol. You figure out, hey, I can have a drink and be okay, and God still loves me, and Jesus drank, and you f- you find out you may be okay with taking pictures, you know, drinking. That's something that happened to me, right? You're okay with that, or you were somebody who was addicted to drugs, and you got into church. Jesus healed you of your drug addiction. You're gonna tell people. You're gonna you're gonna post Christian memes and Bible scriptures all day because you have a zeal for the freedom you've experienced, and I think that some of the stuff that may seem weird because it's kind of new, right? All of this kind of stuff of ways of expressing my freedom. Let me show you. They don't have Bible verses to, to, to share, but they have these other ways of expression to let you know that, look, I don't care about your judgments. I don't care that you don't understand, but I'm free of something that has held me down for years. And there's just different ways that it's organically coming out of new ways to express yourself, new ways to, because we haven't dealt with that. There is no like model of how you cope and how do you express your freedom. Now we're having these conversations. You have uh, meetups and groups. And now it's become it's becoming a part of a, the culture. The Internet is definitely helping it. The podcast and things like that is getting this information out. It's a natural progress that's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that was a mouthful, but um, it's <laughs> well, it's. it's- 
it's cool. It's an People are celebrating, man. Yeah. They're celebrating. Uncharted no matter what was territory. what was holding them down. I don't care what it was, whether it's yeah. alcoholism or you know, told that you can't be gay or whatever the case is. Now yeah, you're going to be flamboyantly gay. That's I think that's where that comes from. Oh, I can't be gay? Watch. Let me show you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> These type of things, man. Yeah. No, I think I think it's a really special and unique time. I think the times are a bit chaotic to be honest, but I think in that chaos, we're all just kind of like blah, 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 trying to figure it out. And Definitely. I'm one of them, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to figure it out. I'm doing my best to stay open hearted and, and composed. And sometimes I just like, I misstep. I'm going to misstep in trying to express who I freely am. I'm going to misstep and I might get judged. I might step on people's toes, but yeah, definitely. never, never on purpose. Yep. Um, here's a, we have a question in the chat. If anybody has any questions for oh. uh, Lauren, y'all make sure y'all send them through and I'll try to, um, articulate them for you. But Allie, uh, says, and this is, I guess a statement more than a question, but she says, uh, she works with teens. Cool. She says, Me too. The, the sexual confusion in teens right now is crazy. Yeah, I she know. says they're overloaded with feminine energy. Teaching balance is a serious need. What would you say about that? There is a, it's really weird. I'm scared. I have a daughter who even last night was like, she's getting ready to uh, start driving. And she's like asking about her curfew when her curfew is going to be. She's still my little baby. Like she doesn't, yeah. she's with us the majority of the time. And she's talking about getting out there. But society is a really weird place. And these different sex and friends and people you get involved with, the sexuality out there with teenagers what what's going on with that what have you seen well man i was a teenage girl and it's, and but it's I, different I was, now though I, right I, yeah it is i work yeah. with teenage girls too and i yeah. i'm are we speaking of girls and boys because i know that there's like sure. sexual identity things that are very confused with yeah. with gender as well yeah, because exactly. of the, like, the strict gender roles there's a yeah. lot of like becoming one gender not wanting to choose one yep all of that that's happening. But in terms of teen girls, which I can speak to the best, um, I mean, even Disney is promoting like hypersexuality. Like when I was a young girl, values, my the, my value was put on how I looked. I was never yeah. called smart. I was never, I was never called all of these other things, but I was always said, told I was pretty. Yeah. I was always pretty. And so, so like, man, that's what you needed. To oh, hear. oh yeah. man. Did I focus on being pretty? And yeah. when I wasn't pretty, I was jealous yep. or when I was, somebody was more pretty than me, I competed, I compared. And then I, when I, I naturally like was attracted to, to boys because my dad wasn't giving me love. So I was like, wow. Okay. And in movies and all the things I'm saw, okay, well, I'm supposed to be attractive. I'm supposed to be pretty. And so I have a teen sister circle program and we talk about all that stuff. Like talk about it, Have talk to. about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about sex, like talk about the pressures. Like if we think they're too young for it, they know what's going on. They know yeah. it they already do. <laughs> Try to act they, like they don't. Yeah. 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 And everybody, I, I, everybody it's, it's so crazy, man. And that's cool that you can, cause I didn't know, like even my idea I'm glad we had this conversation because and, and not just me, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people in my audience had this idea that just like you're talking about this hyper sexualization of children in Disney and all over the place. I mean, what's his name? Desmond, the little kid Desmond. Have you seen what's been going on with him? Um, no. There's a couple of them. Desmond, the Magnificent or whatever, the little drag queen boy. Oh, uh, the, no, not, I don't know. Oh, you haven't seen it. No. My goodness. Wow. Um, they're letting the little boy like he does drag and he's going to the and then he's celebrated the little boy who's embraced his his identity or what he loves to do and not going to let anybody judge him. He's like seven, you know, and he's dressing up in drag. But they've now let him go to uh, gay bars and dance for money. And it's funny. You got the little kid. They're throwing money to the little kid and he's doing splits and bouncing, just provocative stuff that and it's like, OK, like a lot of people are, are they're like celebrating um, this kid, right, for being not afraid to uh, in embrace who he is. The problem that I've seen, I've just t taken a couple notes, is not feminist. I don't think the problem is feminism. I don't think the problem is homosexuality. Um, but I think that there is some type of weird agenda 
that's coming in on the backs of some of these movements. They've kind of like infiltrated these movements. And it's not just those two, but those are some of the big ones or whatever. And and we see these cases standing out like Desmond, like embracing your freak flag and just kind of th- these options to do this stuff. But I mean, you could just look, just type it in just one YouTube video about the hypersexualization and, and kids and in Disney and Nickelodeon and it is insane and it lets you know something's going on here something is going on right there is an agenda they talk about you know the trans agenda the homosexual agenda the feminism agenda we've we've heard these terms like it's some type of something we have to fight against I don't think it is those movements in and of itself but I think that there's something that wants those movements to be a catalyst for something devious whether it is the hyper hyper sexualization of children this isn't the first time like there's well, ancient, think, ancient cultures that did similar things I, I do think you bring up a good point and i just want to say like i 100 percent stand with the feminist movement with the transgender movement and the homosexuality movement 100 percent. and i think that with every every good cause with every every reaction comes an equal and opposite reaction and whether desmond is a part of this something that's not a little bit off or not quite right i'm not sure i've never seen it but i think that with every big opening in society all sorts of things come through as well yeah you know what i mean so i think there's and again i again it's like all the stuff comes up for healing too you know, to explore to the surface for all yeah. of us to examine and see how it makes us feel. And I think, like we said, it's like a very like chaotic time. A lot of things are like accepted and okay. And I, 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 I don't know exactly how to create, how we create that, those structures and boundaries, but back to our sister's question over here about teens. Um, I think it's really important to teach emotional, emotional intelligence and and self-worth and boundaries and also what sexual power actually truly is it's not sex in this like lower vibration to just connect and be sexy and touch bodies and have pleasure it's the most powerful force on earth and we need to really give that type of sexual education that it's our sexuality births projects, births creation actually wields our experience in life and teaching young women and young girls about their sexual power and how they can use it to create beauty in the world rather than just be adored or get attention or have this type of like, you know, lovey kind of chemical thing. Um, I think that is a really unique conversation that we should be having with boys and girls. Yeah, um, we we're forced to have these conversations. It's, it's being ha- the conversations being held without you, so you can either be a part of it or not. Um, you know, YouTube, um, which we're streaming live on YouTube right now. There's just so much stuff out there, um, and your kids are being taught, like they're being trained and they're being groomed, and and certain things are okay and, and stuff. Times are different. You do you think? Do you think that they're it's getting better though. It definitely with, with freedom and we're advancing. Do I do. You, you think it's, everything is getting better? I, I think it's a really cool both? time to be is alive. Is it both though, right? I mean, some things are worse, but then some I things mean, are better. I right? mean, the, the worst stuff, like the, the, the nasty stuff that comes to the surface was always underneath. And it's just like a pimple being popped. I know that's a gross analogy, but it's like, <laughs> you know, the dark always coexists with the light and it's this it's this merging dance that's not about eradicating the dark. It's about bringing it into union and balance. And um, yeah. I don't, that is a great mystery that I can't fully understand. And that's a great mystery that I'm seeking to learn. Yeah. And that's all I know. Yeah. The, with times are changing. Technology is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, the spread of information, knowledge with the internet or misinformation, disinformation, or, negative agendas that are spread as well you know people groups and things that have been promoted as an option out there now it's kind of weird because like you find what you're looking for with the internet with life and with the universe really you really oh you you really attract what you're seeking yeah (laughs) so if you're into dark demonic stuff if you're into religion and theology or if you're into whatever you're into it's there for you you're going to find websites and articles that agree with your stance if you're looking to just be back have your stance yeah. backed up Ideas no matter can what be it validated. is it's, it's so you weird can, you can find a case to validate any idea and that's where i think and i'm i'm gonna have to wrap up soon because my computer is gonna die um sure. but um i 
I, or I could plug it in and we could keep going. But um, I feel like that's where, I think that's where really coming into oneness with ourselves and not wanting to judge other people is really important. Even if we've been hurt and we're trying to validate ourselves, try not to judge people, seek to understand them. And that's a very painful and scary thing to do sometimes. But really, truly, it's like seek to be understood rather than to be so understood. I feel like you have it all figured out. I mean, that's part of spirituality and mindfulness is like, look, I'm not an expert on anything. Like I know which, and that's kind of what I've kind of started from this platform from was not to to be a teacher, which essentially I I am, but it's, it's, I'm teaching like what works for me. Like I can speak on that with, with authority and, and be straight up. Look, this is what works or worked or is working. And this is what, and this other stuff isn't working. Don't do it. Don't, and don't hate, don't hate me. Just don't hate me. I'm just, I'm doing my thing. Yeah, it's it's so funny, and because we reach such a large, you know, you know, what I'm saying number of people, we're we're talking to everybody right now. We're talking to Christian mystics. We're talking to Buddhists. We're talking to, you know, people in Islam. We're talking to feminists. We're talking to masculine. We're talking to everybody. So it's weird to like, you know, people want you to like align with their stance and what they believe in, but you have to look into these movements or these people or whatever, and and and, and see why they're doing it. And I yeah. and I think. Uh, a lot, of, even the ones who are, who you think are wrong, who like in wherever you are, are your enemies. Yeah. Like they're doing it for a reason. And usually it's probably some trauma and some wounds that they haven't dealt with. And this, this movement is the voice of that, that wound. Really? Mm-hmm. I really believe oh, that. Oh yeah. I, I a hundred percent. 100 percent agreed. So the more movements that can be born out of healing, and compassion for all the better there's a bunch of them too we're doing yeah yeah so, uh, and i'm one of them yay yeah. global sisterhood y'all heck yeah let people know if they want to check out your work uh how yeah. they can get involved all that good stuff that you have to so, offer go ahead and plug that so for, so for those who are watching right now we have a big event happening on international women's day which is next friday march 8th and you can go sign up at free the feminine.org we're going to have a global synchronized meditation that's well, all women around the world we've had sixty thousand women meditate with us at the same time before and we'll have women's circles all over in over in over 90 countries gathering doing the same rituals going through the same process of healing and if you want to follow us just on a regular basis, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook. And uh, you can sign up at globalsisterhood.org or to join the campaign for International Women's Day, it's freethefeminine.org. Awesome. Thank you for coming on, hanging out with me. I really enjoyed this conversation. We'll have to do it again. Yeah, it was great. Thank you for thank you for having me, even though the feminist thing was a big if. That was weird, though, because like... It's so, it is, I'm still perplexed. Like you don't know a lot of this stuff that I've seen. I know you've seen the, you talked about the, the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Gillette commercial or whatever. That's interesting too, but this is so weird that you haven't seen it. And then it's all I'm seeing. And I yeah. want, and, and, and it's a timeline thing of what they're letting people see. It's so weird. My mind is wondering like, why haven't you seen it? Maybe it shows up on your timeline. You just don't click no, it. I, I, I don't know. I don't so know. Weird. I, I think that's what I'm saying. I think we can, we can experience a lot of different knowledge. We have a lot of different knowledges and experience and there's going to be one truth that is polar that is within the same truth. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the biggest lesson of today is that man, who's to say what one truth is. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, my friend. Well, thank you for coming on. We'll have to do it again. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank All right, you. Lauren, bye-bye. Lauren Welsh, ladies and gentlemen. So in the chat, let me know, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Have you seen um, Devin is Amazing or whatever it, his name? I think that's his name. Devin is Amazing. Um, Maybe. I think his name is Devin. What's his name? Uh, Desdem- Desmond is Amazing. And, and so... Uh, Let's see, De- Desmond is amazing, drag queen. You know, he there was videos of him dressed up like, um, so this is a little boy. Okay, he's 11 year old, he's 11 years old now. Um, and he's a drag queen kid, a drag, <laughs> drag queen kid. He's a drag kid, 
you know, and he's he's uh he's paraded, you know, he's applauded for being brave. He's a brave soul. All of these things, um, for for dressing up like like a woman, and uh, again. I don't know that this this little boy is is if he I don't think this little boy has an agenda. I think he's just being a little boy. Um but there's someone behind him creating these articles, pushing this stuff. They have an agenda. Again, the homos I love homosexuals transgenders whatever i love them there's no no animosity and i don't think that they're evil i don't you know we have to have this conversation and even from a judeo-christian perspective is i guess what i still hold to these beliefs or whatever but i'm not against the homosexual i'm not against the gay person i'm not but i feel like there's a greater agenda behind these movements that have kind of infiltrated them in Christianity as well. I'm not against Christianity. Even though I'm vocal about a lot of their stuff, but they've been hijacked by political systems and agendas. Anyway, I'm going to show the video here of, of Desmond and I'm not going to play the music, but he's coming out to I'm just a girl by um, no doubt, and he's dressed like Gwen Stefani, dancing for all of you who were, and they're gonna throw money, they're throwing money at him already. He's gonna take his little dress off here in a second. Okay, there's the music. You heard it just for a second. He's dancing. When it says "I'm just a girl," it's a little boy dancing to "I'm just a girl." It's okay. He went ahead and. He throws his dress off, and now he's a little Gwen Stefani. That's cool. He's dancing. Look, they're handing him money. What do you? You do that to strippers, man. Look at these grown men handing him money. Look at this dude. Perverts, man. Ain't nothing funny. Two gay men handing the little boy money. This ain't funny. It's not. There's other videos. He's done this. He's done like catwalk. He's done this dress more provocative, right? He's done this with little bitty shorts on. And look at this guy handing the money. Dude dressed like I don't know, Hulk Hogan or Big Bird or something. I don't know what he is. It's disgusting, man. There is an agenda behind this stuff. Look at this dude. And these people need to be stopped. Really. They need to be stopped. There's an agenda, man. There is a war for, for your, your mind there's a war for your family. Who's behind it? What's behind it? Satan, the devil, whatever. Like, that's what we want to we want to call it. But there's there's a war going on for your mind, for your future, for your children's future. It's disgusting. Um, I seen another um, article. <clears throat> or or meme or picture and it was parenting magazine and the reason i'm t you know we're talking about this stuff is because there I, I really feel like there's an agenda to destroy the family structure there's an agenda by evil people to destroy the family structure as we know it and it's not I don't think it's the homosexual's fault. I don't think it's the feminist fault. I don't think it's the Satanist fault or whoever. But I think that these movements, which are, I, I believe a lot of these movements are organic and just. But I think that they've been hijacked. I think that there's people funding them with ulterior motives, politically biased, to destroy the family structure parenting magazine the latest like seven or eight releases right of parenting magazine all of them have been showcasing gay couples with children and um 
single parents, a single mom, the single mom, the gay dads, seven or eight issues. There is not a issue with a mom and dad together. If we look at what happened with black culture, they have removed the fathers out of the home. You get benefits, free money. And it has to do so it has to deal with something with with it being a race thing to get those benefits. It has to be. You get benefits if you remove the dad out. Now, you know, the moms have to be mom and dad. There's a there's a bunch of stuff going on with that. We can we can um we can have we can work the same job, make the same money, and go down to the same welfare office. And the African American gets approved and the white man gets sent away with nothing. When I lost my job, I, I tried to apply for benefits and things like that. Um, I think they gave me $11 a month. They gave me $11 for groceries, for like food stamps or whatever. I tried it. I needed to see how I was going to make this work until I was able to transition to another job. $11. This is true. This is not opinion. Like We know people who, um, who have the same uh, jobs who went down there together, make the same amount of income. One gets approved, the other doesn't. And it's usually a black and white thing. I really believe that there is an agenda to remove the black fathers out of the home. There is an agenda to put masculine men in dresses. Look it up. There's an agenda. Somebody is behind it. Somebody's doing it. I don't know who. You want to call it the devil? It's definitely demonic, so we could say that. The devil is behind it, using men. Look at this, the, the, the hypersexualization of children. The kids are coming up now confused. They have choices. You don't have to be a boy or a girl anymore. You can be whatever you want. You don't have to be a boy or a girl. You can abandon your gender. See, when we were kids, when we got mad at our parents, we felt depressed and alone. We became gothic. Some people even cut themselves to cope. There was a big movement of cutters. Is your child a cutter? Now, kids get mad at their parents. They abandon their gender. It's an option now. It wasn't an option when I was a kid. I don't believe... We're talking about agendas. I don't believe... Call me what you want, old-fashioned, whatever. But I don't believe that all that, that there were this many... Gay people 20 years ago. I don't. I understand that now it's more accepted that you can come out of the closet. You don't have to be hiding in the closet anymore. It's something that's accepted. I'm cool with that. That's fine. Whatever your sexual preference is, that's between you and God. I have nothing to do with that. I don't know what that feels like to burn in my heart for another uh, man. I would have never felt that. I have... You know, whatever that is, and you have to cope with that. What I don't, I don't know. A lot of people will say pray the gay away. A lot of people um, don't believe that works. There's even laws against that if you try to do that. And certain, they can sue you, right? But I do believe that there's an agenda because I don't believe that there's this overnight um, coming out party to where now, like, I don't think there were this, this many gay people hiding um, in the closet who are now in the streets or who are now working at every um, gas station and every every restaurant. I don't believe it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just don't believe it. It's an option now. That has to account for something. It's an option now. Back then, it wasn't an option. Their gay people existed. Yeah, totally did. In the, in the streets and in the closet. But I don't think it was this many. Hypersexualization of children, the destruction of the family system, and and so many agendas. I'm just touching on two or three of them. There's so many of them, you know. That's why I fight for that. That's why I want to preserve the family system. 
But there's even people believe that, um, you know, the family structure that which we have, the the mom and dad in the house, and I mean, even you know, putting you know, making the the you know, what I'm saying both parents work and not even be able to afford ends meet with both parents working full time jobs. That's part of it too. Both parents working and you still can't afford to pay your bills and put food on the table. Dad has to get two jobs. Dad has to work overtime. All of these things and not be able to p- provide basic necessities and basic needs. The old family stru- structure system, the dad worked, worked one job. Mom cared for the home, cared for the kids. They were taken care of. Everything was good. Now both of them have to be working. Both of them are tired and exhausted when they come home. And somebody's got to cook dinner. Somebody's got to clean the house. Somebody's got to take care of the children. I, I really feel like this is a uh, an agenda. And I don't blame gays. I don't blame transgenders. I don't bl- blame feminists. Because I believe a lot of that, that outrage and that stuff is natural. Right? It's a natural movement. These people have been oppressed. Right? But people someone probably old white men have infiltrated these groups for political reasons political positioning power i mean why else would hillary clinton staunchly be against homosexuality staunchly she i mean there's footage of her saying she'll never never push it never pass a bill gay marriage all that stuff and then for the political campaign then once the stuff's coming to light more oh yes and you know, that became a part of their party. The leftists Hey, this is something naturally happening. We have to get behind it. So n- n- then she's outspoken. Now she's she's campaigning for uh, gay marriage and stuff like that. The shifting of political power. And Danny Guerrero says, yep, Obama did the same thing. Obama did it. Obama was cool. Obama was the, the hip hop. Uh, president, he had you know Young Jeezy, Dwayne Wade, basketball players, LeBron James, J- James Jay Z had all these people in the White House. He's shooting ball with them. I mean, he's one of the fellas. He's quoting Jay, uh, Kanye West, and he's cool. He was the people person. Like we all like, he's the first black president. Shoot, come on, everybody loved him until months before he was gonna do his second term. Months before. He passed all of that stuff. That was really weird. At the last minute, the bathroom thing, the gay marriage, all of that stuff. It was really weird how he snuck it in really fast at the very end. Totally weird. And there's an agenda. It's nothing to do with Obama. It wasn't. I don't think it was. I don't think it was Obama's idea to do that. Let's say that. That's the agenda. And it's so funny. The right and the left are like, yeah, Trump is doing this, man. Trump, man, Trump is a businessman. Trump is a, is a is a mouthpiece. He's a puppet. Obama is a mouthpiece, a puppet. All of these people are. You, got the, 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 you know, you just put a righteous person. You can't vote the devil out of office. This is a, this is a dynasty. These people that this people have these people are bred to do this. They were born to rule. This is who they are. Powers and principalities in heavenly realms that you're dealing with. How do you have like a whole lineage of, of, of people who became president? Just got voted in a whole lineage, like three people, fathers and sons becoming presidents. It's a lineage. I could see if the son was an upstanding citizen, a good business mogul, businessman versus being a cokehead party animal so much so that his media training didn't even help him all right it's your turn get ready you're next in line get your stuff together quit doing you got to quit doing it and didn't even help media training couldn't even help him there's an agenda i don't think one video one podcast many of you guys have i've seen it you've spent you know, a long time researching this stuff and you've seen enough stuff to kind of convince you that something is going on. There is an agenda. I'm going to jump over here in the comment sections a little bit. 
Um, Danny says, uh, I think the L- LGTQ community is demonic. I've seen many people who act like gurus, but they get offended if you don't agree with them on that topic and see nasty comments coming out their mouths. Yeah, totally. Totally. There was a, um, for any movement, for any, uh, any people group, you're going to have people come in and out of that, right? Even Christianity. There's people who abandoned, uh, have abandoned Christianity and they have testimonies on why they left Christianity and the hatred and the bigotry and the you know, false prophets, whatever. You can find, type in YouTube, why I left Christianity. You're going to probably be slaughtered with those. You're going to be slaughtered with uh, videos why I left Wicca and went to Christianity. Why I left Islam and met Jesus. Like you're going to find opposing views on everything, no matter what it is, right? Um, same thing with the LGBTQ. Or what is it? Um, you know what I'm saying? The trans, the, the transgender stuff, which is huge. Like that's an option now. You can abandon your gender. And I dare you to say something about it. Watch what happens. I don't even know what's going to happen to this podcast. I'm ranting on it a little bit too much and just st- sticking on these subjects. But um, when it when it comes to that, man, there was a uh, there was a man. I shared his testimony. He um, he became transgender. Uh, lived this. He was a man who uh, back in the day. And there's a couple of these older gentlemen who um, lived their lives as the opposite sex and did all kind of stuff to their body, implants, removing genitals, weird, a lot of that genital, you know what I'm saying, mutilation, weird stuff, they've done it. And then they've, at the end of their life, they say, you know, I wish I wouldn't have did it and all of this, and they can understand the trauma and hurt why they did it. Why they did it. And they'll tell you. I shared a video, it was a guy's testimony, an old man, he had his, you know, he actually had makeup, you know, tattooed on him and stuff, and he, he he regretted doing that and he just kind of gave his testimony i shared it and i um uh, people started lashing out at me for sharing that that's that man's story with that with being transgender and how he contemplated suicide on a daily basis and all this it's his story you can't change that that's his story and then see how it just offends everybody so so it's not. It, I don't think it even is about coexisting with a lot of these movements. I think that they want. I don't even think they want rights. I think I don't think they want privilege. I think they want special rights. I think they want special privilege, and that's where it becomes a problem. And it's we're in really weird times right now. But there is an agenda, and there is someone who's writing this script. And I don't think that they're good people. I don't. We'll go back to the comments. Geo says, uh, gays and transgenders make up 1% of the entire population. Yeah. Um, and that's the whole thing with that, with those movements. Like they're really loud though. Right. They're loud. And then they have Hollywood behind them. I mean, you can, Hollywood is definitely left. Right. And they'll they'll admit it. That's not even a thing. They laugh at you if you say you believe in in God or Christ. You know, they laugh at you if you stand up for, you know, right wing morals and they'll they'll cut your head off. Look what happened to uh, Roseanne. Why? When did all that happen with Roseanne? I always we covered this. I always make mention of it with that tweet. And they silenced her, her platform and all that kind of stuff and took her her life's work away from her. Alex Jones as well. What what did these two have in common? Right wing Trump supporters. Right wing Trump supporters. Um, Joe Rogan just had uh, Alex Jones back on his show. And it was it was interesting to say the least. But I watched the majority of it. I think it was like a four-hour podcast. I watched the majority of it, and it was interesting to say the least. I wouldn't be surprised in this totalitarian system if they, all scripted, by the way, 
if Joe Rogan loses his platform just by, just for having him on. I wouldn't be surprised. These people are fighting back, man. They're not going out without a fight. All of this stuff, man. That's why I don't get in. I, I try not to get into this conversation too much because I've studied it. Like I, I know that there is these agendas. I know that there is this, these forces out there that are warring for your mind. And uh, you'll be so overwhelmed and so freaked out and so scared of it, you become a hermit. I have friends who have done that. I have friends who are scared to buy anything because they think their tax money is going to, you know, fund abortions and fund um, children, you know, wars and things like that. So they don't even buy, sell, or trade because they think that God is going to hold them accountable for that. You can get so overwhelmed in, in some places. I think that it's good to understand who your enemy is. I think it's good to understand. And it's not people. I want to make that straight. You're in, it's not a people. It's not a gay person. It's not a transgender. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not a Christian. Those aren't your enemies. There's a power and a principality, a vibration that is behind that stuff, leading them. Good or bad. Good or bad. And you can tell by the fruit. What type of fruit is it producing in people? It is what it is. Th- there's a reason why I don't talk about this. You know, the scripture tells us to to think about good things. If there be anything good, if there any be, be anything good, true, noble, of good report, think on these things. Why? Because you'll become a hermit. You'll be freaked out all the time. You'll be thinking that everyone is against you. You'll be thinking that, you know, you'll be... So you'll be so much aware of what the enemy is doing that you won't even be able to know, uh, you know, the will of God for your life. You'll be so freaked out by the Illuminati. You begin to see it everywhere. You begin to retrain your mind and be able to look for numbers and triangles and all seeing eyes and everything that you look at in buildings and the architecture. Truth is, it's there. But you can't get stuck there. You know, in the, in the midst of all that confusion, in the midst of all this stuff that's going on, there is a standard that many of us are trying to trying to hold. There is there is righteousness. There is a peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of all of this war and chaos. And we have access to it. And it is through Christ. You have access to that. The peace of God, the rest of God, a peace, love and a sound mind. Though people be falling on the right, the left, people going through battles and struggles. And though things come against you, you shall by no means be harmed. That you can keep a perfect peace in the midst of all that stuff that's going on. Financial crisis. All of it. Marriages shifting, breaking up. Your marriages can be protected. You can hold a standard, a higher standard. It could be done. That's what I like to talk about. That's what I like to focus on. I don't like to give any credit to the enemy because he's out there. It'll, I mean, it sells, definitely sells, but in the end, it's not a foundation to be built upon. Fear mongering, focusing on the enemy. Danny says, yep, you got to balance it out. You definitely do. Um, Magic Blubber says demons pulling the strings from the astral and from the, their possessed host. Yep. People are demon possessed. Doing demonic things with children, with dead bodies, with body parts. And we, we've covered a little bit of this stuff on here. Not a lot. I try not to get into a lot of that stuff, but it's out there. Look into it. You just got to look into it. Eddie Bravo. Yep. So uh, that's pretty much my notes, man. I feel like we're, we are to, to preserve the family system, the family structure. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end leads to destruction. No, we're in, we're in, we're in weird times. But don't worry. Don't doubt. Don't fret. 
The just live by faith. We don't, I don't operate or try not to according to this government. When you're talking about Christ, this is a whole nother structure. He said the government will be upon his shoulders. That's what the word says. The government shall be upon his shoulders. That's a heavenly government. There's heavenly, there are armies, heavenly armies. Worry about our army. Worry about the heavenly armies. Those are the ones that protect me. I believe it. Therefore, I receive it. What do you believe in? Who do you believe in? Your faith being tested every day. What you believe in. Man, love is the answer at the end of the day. Love for all of these people who are caught up in these movements. Love for people who are caught up in toxic feminism. Love for people who are caught up in toxic masculinity. Toxic Christianity. You know, toxic whatever. Whatever ism that they're involved in. There's a lot of crazy stuff being passed. Bills. Demonic things that are being seen as normal. This uh, late term abortion. Talking about being able to abort children. Um, right before they come out of the mother. Just demonic stuff, man. Crazy stuff. I rebuke you. I hate it. It's disgusting. You can have life and have it more abundantly. There's a peace that surpasses all understanding. So with it, with everyone. So that's why we teach these spiritual spiritual practices to Focus on the breathing, the breath work, connect with the spirit realm, connect with the heavenly father, connect with Christ consciousness in the angels. Yes, there's ways to overcome them. And it's not through voting. It's not by joining a party. There's ways to overcome this stuff. Whew, I don't even know how to pull this off of a bad tip because this stuff is disgusting. Just pray against it, man. Live your life. Be the example. I I don't I don't feel like we're going to move legislation and we're going to be able to let's be cut. Let's join the government. Let's join the political party so that we can over overthrow these things or vote or rally or get all of our people to protest. I don't think any of that's going to change anything. It hasn't changed anything. Maybe back in the day, even if those oppositions weren't controlled as well. You know. But where we are now, I think that if you want to end abortion, I don't think it's voting against abortion. I don't I don't think you end it by voting against it. I think that you you end abortion to the way you do it is that. Raise your children up in the way that they should go, and when they get older, they will not depart from it. Teach your kids not to do it. Let them be the standard. Let them be the example. Let them tell other people as well. There's a standard. The Bible says you'll be the envy of all nations. The envy of all nations. They want to know what you got. How can they obtain it? How could they walk in peace in the midst of this broken system? People killing themselves. Murdering each other. Godlessness. How do you not lose your cool? How do you keep your peace? You be the envy of all nations. I believe that. That's our inheritance. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you'd like to support the podcast, support my work and my music, uh, please head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker. Any level of giving helps. Um, I'm trying to make it very interactive. A lot of cool stuff. Music podcast exclusive content that you get access to school of the mystics which is something that we're doing tonight it's an online video hangout where we talk about these subjects and uh get into prayer and get into uh some um fellowship really just to let you know that you're not alone so uh, i really look forward to our thursday night sessions sunday morning seer class that we're doing you get access to that stuff via patreon so make sure y'all head over there check that stuff out and i would love to uh to hang out with you even in our personal discord where we just try to do life together so with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom guys thank you um for everything let's see yep with that i'm say peace and shalom want to join our discord link is in the description patreon links are in the description all my meditations that kind of stuff that i bring to the table it's all there 
Love you guys. Peace, peace. Well, that does it for this episode.